in. D. I guess I like Vigorous Song. Hello everybody, and welcome to my new Let's Play. I will be playing, as you can see here, Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator. This is actually a series of games. There are eight games in the series, if I uh, remember correctly, and um, I have to say, it is a really good series. Um, this was actually made by an independent company, as you saw, Grundeslav. Um, and they decided they wanted to make games uh, kind of in the old uh, point-and-click style. You know, those old school adventure games, and I think they did a really good job. Now, um, I'm not going to be playing them all in one go. I'm going to be doing one at a time and doing other Let's Plays in between. But I do plan to do all of them since uh, they do have, just really have a, have a really good uh, story arc to it. And um, it all kind of ties together in the end. And um, this first game, the first and second games, I'll be doing the, uh, I'll be playing the remakes of them since the originals kind of had worse graphics and no voice acting. But uh, they, to this point, uh, from what I've seen, they have not made remade three and four. So once we do get to those, it'll be the kind of downgraded graphics and no voice acting. But um, and also know that this is their very first game, so it's not that you know involved. It's very simple. This should only be like uh, four or five videos long, if that. But it does get better, more advanced, and you do see lots of improvements as we'll go through the series. And, I think it's all really, really fun. So, let's get started. So you'd like to hear about how I got into this mess? How a regular guy ended up half a world away, unconscious in the backseat of a car belonging to a guy he thought he could trust but turned out to be his worst enemy? But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I should start from the very beginning. It's the best place, after all. My name is Ben Jordan. I was just your average college graduate. 22 years old, with no direction in life, and a degree that got me nowhere except a sales job with a local bullseye. As a kid, I was in love with monster movies and anything to do with the paranormal. My family thought it was just a waste of time, except for my grandfather. Grandpa Arthur used to tell me ghost stories and legends he had heard while traveling through Europe in the 1920s. This really fueled my interest in the paranormal. By the time I finished high school, I was obsessed. I wanted to travel and see if the legends were true. But I had to put my dreams aside and go to college to appease my parents. I ended up studying international relations, which bored me to tears. So I passed the time by reading my books on the paranormal, listening to Pink Floyd, and dreaming of my ideal career. One day I was browsing the web and found a book called The Paranormal Investigator's Handbook by Professor Quincy Sanborn. I ordered it immediately and read it cover to cover the day it arrived. It was then that I decided I was going to become a paranormal investigator. So after graduating, I asked my parents to loan me some money, advertised my services on the internet, and sat back waiting for the cases to come rolling in. Of course, at the time, I had no way of knowing that the path I'd chosen was going to change my life in more ways than one. Case 1, In Search of the Skunk Ape my first case started off with me receiving a phone call, but not one I was very happy about. No, Mom, I, I told you. I've decided to become a freelance paranormal investigator. I know you think it sounds crazy, but just trust me on this one. I think I've seen enough episodes of The X-Files to know that there's something out there. Look, I have to go. I'll call you back in a few days. <sighs> I don't understand. It's been three weeks since I posted about my services on those forums. You'd think someone would have called by now. Uh, hello? Yes, this is Ben Jordan. Uh, sir, please calm down. I, I can't understand what you're saying. A skunk ape murdering people in the Florida Everglades? Okay, I'll go there as soon as I can. What did you say your name was? Ranger Morales. Okay, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Well, that sure was weird. But I've got a case. Time to buy a ticket to Florida. All right. Hello, I'm Ben Jordan. Are you Ranger Morales? I'm afraid not, young man. I'm glad you've arrived, though. What's the matter? Did something happen to him? Come with me, and I'll show you. The crap, is that Christopher Walken? Well, here he is. We found him here about an hour ago. 
My god, what did this to him? It seems that this was the work of a creature that up until now was just a legend. A monster known as the Skunk Ape. I guess I'd better start my investigation then. Alright, and we begin. And just like every good point and click game, we have our options here. We have walk, we have, you know, we have talk to that just kind of starts a random conversation and we can ask questions. We have some notes. So, uh, let's take a good look at the dead ranger. The mutilated body of the ranger is stretched out on the dirt. Well, let's look at ourselves. It's you, Ben Jordan, on your first case. Exciting, isn't it? Thanks, Skippy. The old ranger looks slightly nervous. You can't really blame him. I'll just call him Ranger Walkin'. The water flows past ever so slowly. You can see why this place is called the River of Grass. Let's see. In the distance, you see a green roof belonging to a nearby building. Well, since we have a touch icon, let's touch the dead body. Feeling slightly nauseated, you examine the body more closely. Oh, good heavens, that is horrific. Yeah, I think the first game is like the goriest one of them all. The rest of them aren't nearly this bad, so... If you're, um, squeamish about that kind of stuff, don't worry. Let's see, what is this? There seems to be a tuft of hair clutched in the ranger's hand. Maybe he pulled it off the skunk ape as he was being attacked. Maybe so. You pick it up and place it in your purse. <laughs> Did I say purse? I meant pocket. Oh. Uh, anybody who's a fan of adventure games should get that reference, but uh, whatever. The ranger's mutilated and blood-soaked body is stretched out here. The latest victim of the skunk ape. The ranger is wearing a pair of standard olive green pants. The ranger's midsection has been torn open by whatever attacked him. Several of his internal organs are visible. However, you notice that his liver seems to be missing. Interesting. A large pool of blood is collected under the body. The ranger's mutilated... Oh, yeah. The ranger's face is twisted into an expression of sheer horror. Either his attacker caught him by surprise, or he's just shocked at the fact that his innards are currently on display to the rest of the world. Yeah, that would be a bit awkward. You search through the ranger's pockets, but find nothing of interest. Darn. You'd really rather not handle another man's organs. <laughs> hmm, the blood him? feels wet. The body is still warm. This happened very recently. Keep your fingers out of the ranger's face. <laughs> Just because he's dead, that's no excuse for you to be rude to him. <laughs> oh, this game. So this game has a lot of really good humor, too. So, uh, okay. Ooh, we have a rifle, too. Didn't you pick this rifle up on your way to Florida. You hope you make some good money off this case, because buying it created a large void in your bank account. Your notepad and pen, saviors of your bad short-term memory. It's a tuft of Sasquatch hair and mange. Let me see if we make any notes. That doesn't seem to work. That doesn't seem to work. I think he just makes notes automatically, but we will use that for something else. You'll just have to wait and see. And that uh, seems to be all we can do. Let's get out of here and talk to Ranger Walken. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Just a little jumpy is all. Excuse me. Yes? What can you tell me about the murders? Oh my, they're horrible. Ranger Morales is the fifth person we've found in the past two weeks. Before that, we lost another ranger. A young woman named Rita Myers. There was also a vacationing couple who were camping out in the woods, and the first person we found was a teenage boy who had gone out hiking. All the bodies have had one thing in common. They're all missing their livers. Missing the livers? Yes. Our best guess is that the skunk ape eats the livers. Yikes. 
When the whole problem started, we found a few deer here and there with their livers torn out, but then we started finding people, and the M.O. just carried over. Hmm. What I like about this is that once you ask a question, then that is, like, taken from the options so that you're not re-asking the same things and wondering, did I ask that yet? So, about Ranger Morales. Tell me about Ranger Morales. I didn't know him very well, but he seemed like a nice guy. Do you know of any reason why he might have been attacked? Not really, no. So far, the murders have all seemed to be random. However, he's the first body that's been found so close to the main tourist area. The others have been further out in the woods. If this keeps up, we may have to close the park until something can be done. What do you know about the skunk ape? I don't know any specific facts. The skunk ape was always more of an urban legend. But I have heard a few things. What exactly would you like to know? What is a skunk ape exactly? Shouldn't you know it's that? It's similar to a yeti or a sasquatch, but we call it a skunk ape because its trademark is a horrible smell. Some have described it as being a mix of rotten eggs, moldy cheese, and dung. That sounds... unpleasant. It is. But the good thing is that that characteristic will make it somewhat easier to track down. I Remember guess. that later. Yeah, that growling means we get points. 4 out of 68, so... Yeah, when you know we, get, when we see a game only has 68 points, you know it's going to be short. So, um... Has anyone actually seen the skunk ape? The only ones who have are dead. So there aren't any survivors or anything I could talk to? I'm afraid not. So if you haven't seen it, do you know what it looks like? Not for certain, but the rumors of its appearance are all the same. It's supposed to be seven feet tall, weigh about 300 pounds, and have a nasty temper. Glad I asked. Are there any other animals in the park that might be capable of attacking people like this? Not really. The Florida Panther might be capable of it, but there are so few of them left it seems unlikely that they would be to blame. Besides, they usually keep to themselves. Have you found any evidence as to what might be responsible? The only thing we've found so far is a large footprint near one of the murder scenes. I see. That's all for now. Okay. This is a nice park you've got here. Thanks. We rangers pride ourselves on keeping this state preserve as pristine and beautiful as we can. It's really a shame that our nation's wetlands are constantly disappearing. Yes, I agree. Can you tell me how to get around the area? Of course. This area isn't really that big. Over there you can see the roof of the visitor's center. Near that is a ranger station, and of course there's the forest too. Here, take this brochure. It's got a map so you can find your way. Thanks. Sweet. Tell me about yourself. Me? My name is Ernie. I've been a ranger here at Everglades National Park for over 30 years. I love nature. I guess it runs in my family since my brother moved out west to become a medicine man. Aside from that, I really don't know what else to tell you. So, now that I know more or less what I'm dealing with, what do you suggest I do? Well, that's a good question. Obviously, we need to find out why the skunk ape has decided to start killing people and stop it from doing so again. As a park ranger, I'm morally opposed to killing it, but as it has already taken more than one human life, that may unfortunately be the only solution. I think your best bet is to go out into the forest and see if you can find out if the skunk ape has a lair or some place it stays regularly. Of course, you shouldn't go alone, but most of the other rangers have been too scared to go out into the woods since the killing started. I'd go with you myself, but I don't think I'm up for much excitement anymore. You said most of the rangers were too scared to go into the woods. Are there any who aren't? Well, there is one guy, Ranger Rick. But I don't know if he'll want to go. He's seriously named Ranger Rick. <laughs> seriously. Oh, it's been a while since i played this game. Tell me about Ranger Rick. He hasn't been working here very long, but he's one of our best rangers. The thing about him is, he's extremely superstitious when it comes to nature. He might go into the woods with you, but he might have some weird reason for not wanting to. Well, right now he's my best option. Do you know where I can find him? He should be at the ranger station. Thanks for all your help. No problem. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. 
All right, so that should be all we can do right here. We don't have to come back here at any point, I don't think. So uh, let's see where is our... Is that it? There we go. This is our inventory. And uh, let's look at the map we got. You were given this brochure of the Florida Everglades, which conveniently includes a map of the area. You open up the brochure and look at the map. And with this, we can fast travel to certain places. Visitor Center, Ranger Station, Forest. Uh, I've got a couple of minutes left. Let's check out the Ranger Station, see if we can't find Ranger Rick. This is a very tiny place. The Ranger Station is a small shack-like structure. It seems the government doesn't send much of its funding this way. <laughs> Ooh, and here we have Ranger Rick. Only you can prevent forest fires. It's a map of the Everglades. The desk has a couple of drawers. Your curiosity begins to get the better of you. An old radio is blaring out some horrible blues tune. You were never really a fan of the harmonica. That is quite an unpleasant sound to me. Station that listening you to. search through the drawers and find a box of diuretic water pills. Diuretic water pills? Why would we ever need those? Well, you know the rule of adventure games. If it's not nailed down, you take it. Anyway, so we got Ranger Rick here, but um, uh, will he help us or will he send us on a uselessly long fetch quest in order to get him an item which he does not need? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator, and I promise things will get more exciting. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.